for any sort of money or financial assistance, but rather for an amendment to an existing state law. There is a gap in the public's protection against abuse of power by municipal government on account of a lack of an enforcement clause specifying a penalty for violation of Florida State Law Article 14, Chapter 212, Section 55, which narrowly defines the purposes for which money is derived from the state approved sales tax surcharge is granted to a county and how it shall be used by the municipality that receives these sales tax surcharge monies. Without such an enforcement clause, any municipality in Florida can expend such monies, for example, pennies for Pinellas, as it's colloquially called in our county, and may use it as it wishes, essentially, effectively ignoring the purposes for which this sales tax surcharge law was created by the state. That is, to benefit the public in the form of improvements to public facilities and infrastructure. According to Mr. Doyle Jordan, chief investigator in the office of the state attorney for Pinellas, without such an amendment specifying at least a minimal penalty, for example, first degree misdemeanor, for such violation, no action can be taken by his office. Hence, there is no protection against the abuse of the sur surcharge tax, tax monies can be afforded to the public. According to Mr. Hector Colazzo, Jr., Inspector General of Pinellas County, it would also be of immense benefit to the public if the state would grant uh, the division of the Inspector General of Pinellas and other counties the authority to, to enlarge its authority to audit the many municipalities in the county of Pinellas and others with regard to sales tax surcharge money disbursements and how they're spent. Several county inspector general offices already have this authority, such as Dave, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. I therefore request that serious consideration be given to the Pinellas legislative delegation by the Pinellas legislative delegation to closing this loophole in Article 14, which would be a benefit to all Floridians as well as helping to restore a degree of faith in government, the lack of which was amply demonstrated by the results of the most recent national election. I thank you very much for your attention to this matter, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you thank very you. much. Number 24, Michael Marino. Good morning, my name is Michael Marino. I am the public policy director for United Way Suncoast. Our organization serves children and families in DeSoto, Willsboro, Pinellas, and Sarasota counties. In your packets in front of you is the United Way of Florida legislative agenda. Our agenda calls attention to the challenge of Alice families. These are households that are asset limited, income constrained, but employed. They are above the poverty line but earning less than the cost of living in their respective counties. In Pinellas, 41% of more than 160,000 households are considered Alice families. We are grateful that the legislature supported our efforts to assist Alice families by appropriating $500,000 for United Way's volunteer income tax assistance and financial literacy <coughs> programs across Florida. The return on investment for this program is significant. In Pinellas, volunteer prepared returns generate $14.7 million in total refunds for United Way clients in the last tax season and $232 million statewide. But thousands are still missing out on claiming their fair share of refunds, including those who should be claiming the earned income tax credit. In Pinellas, an estimated $36 million goes unclaimed by working families each year. By increasing the state's investment in this program, thousands of new families making less than $64,000 a year will be able to access volunteer prep services. This will provide them an opportunity to use their tax refunds to keep them on the road to financial stability. Our other major issue is access to quality early learning programs, which is essential for our families. Yet only 4% of the state's education budget is spent on early learning programs. We join our partners at Early Learning Coalitions across the state to support efforts to increase school readiness funding. As has been talked about earlier, research shows that investments in quality early learning results in more students ready for elementary school, more high school 
graduates, and more career-ready adults. On behalf of the United Way Suncoast, thank you for your support. We look forward to continuing work with you to support our families and children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marino. Number 25. Good morning. I guess it's still this morning. Uh, my name is Keith Flaw. I'm here representing the Florida Citizens Alliance. Uh, we have teams in 27 counties making these types of presentations on both Second Amendment preservation in K through 12. They're both federal overreach issues. With regard to the Second Amendment, the recent national election gave those who believe in the founding principles of our nation a glimmer of hope. But one man cannot do this alone. Regarding our individual rights, the best defense is an aggressive offense. It's time to save our Second Amendment for ourselves and our, uh, and our uh, future generations. For the last 60 years or more, the progressives have been slowly turning up the heat and boiling the frog in the kettle. We have hundreds of federal laws and state laws across the nation to infringe our God-given right to self-defense protecting ourselves and our families. Now is not the time to go on defense and set back for four to eight years until the pendulum swings back. Part of the answer, of course, is a Supreme Court. But if this is not the solution our founders gave us, it is not sustainable for future generations. The only long-term answer is constitutional state sovereignty. We must demand that our Florida state legislators act aggressively, in fact, seize the day to use the Tenth Amendment to protect us from current and future federal infringement of the Second Amendment. The Florida Citizens Alliance proposes a solution for effectively protecting the Second Amendment, rights of all Floridians. We call it the Second Amendment Preservation Act. Through this act, the state of Florida would exercise its constitutional power and declare that federal firearms legislations and executive orders are unconstitutional and void of the state. The Second Amendment Preservation Act would prohibit the use of state resources or personnel to enforce these unconstitutional laws. The state of Florida would simply be exercising its constitutional authority to preserve, preserve the rights of its citizens. 10 states, and I'm repeat this, 10 states have already used their constitutional rights under the 10th Amendment to protect their citizens. In closing, the Florida Citizens Alliance stands in support of the God-given rights of all Florida Floridians. <coughs> In our meetings with legislators, many of you have assured us of your strong support of the Second Amendment. Uh, many of you even privately have pledged that you will not allow the federal government to take away your weapons. Um, most of you probably don't realize that if you do this, you're non-complying, and that decision alone will make you a felon in the eyes of the federal government. We appreciate your rigorous statements in defense of the constitutional rights. However, we wonder why any legislature would risk letting the feds make many of their voters, who will also now comply, uh, felons in the eyes of the federal government. It's time for decisive action to match tough rhetoric. The Florida Citizens Alliance calls on all Florida legislators to protect <coughs> all Floridians from federal overreach. Please pass the Second Amendment Preservation Act and guarantee once and for all the preservation of all rights for ourselves and for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flaw. The final presenter on our list, number 26, Mark Phillips. Well, it looks like Mark Phillips. Yes, yeah, obviously not Mark Phillips. He was not able to present. And um, I am Marsha MacArthur, and I'm a resident of Largo, Florida. And I'm here today. Um, thank you for uh, the time. Uh, today I'm here to address the issues of K through 12 education for Pinellas County children in all of Florida public schools. In the last 40 years, there has been a 378% increase in inflation adjusted spending with flat or declining student outcomes in reading, math, and science. In Florida, student achievement on national norm ACT tests dropped from 34th to 47th and with 46 states scoring higher, coupled with a 15 to 20 billion education spending. SAT and NAP results show similar trends. U.S. News and World Report shows a national comparison of best high schools and rated Pinellas County with a 30 to 40 percent point gap to the top 20 high schools in Florida. With a 46 percent 
percent reading and 47 percent proficiency based on national norm test scores. The Florida proficiency, uh, no, the Florida proprietary grading system is very misleading and deceptive to parents, the business community, and le legislators. Regarding curriculum, content problems, with an analysis of seven Florida counties, textbooks, and on online materials shows Florida public schools are riddled with political and religious indoctrination, revisionist history, sexual content with which that tears down family values, destructive math pedagogy. The proposed solution begins with following Florida law. There are excellent guidelines and oversight provided by Florida legislature in FS 103.42, requiring the teaching of our founding principles and FS 847.011, prohibiting sexually explicit materials. These statutes are not being followed today in Florida, and there are no effective enforcement mechanisms. We need our legislators to enforce compliance to Florida law. The Hayes 2016 um, Instructional Material Bill of SB 1019-HB 899 needs to be passed in the 2017 legislative cycle. It is a fix-it bill for SB 864-5S 1006.283 and closes the loopholes and returns curriculum decisions to local communities as the original law intended. You have an executive summary in your package and we can email you the detailed bill draft. In addition, Florida Citizens Alliance leaders have created a comprehensive education bill that returns choice and accountability <coughs> to local communities with legislative oversight. This comprehensive proposal uh, strongly encourages innovation <coughs> and competition to eliminate the failing K-12 factories that exist in our Florida public schools today. The executive Don, summary. We, we have that in our yes. package, don't we? Yes, yes. Which we can read. Yes, uh, you can. We're going to need to uh, wrap up. Okay, okay. But thank you very much for um, the time today and for, for considering looking at the bill for this year. Thank you. Uh, Representative Sproul, congratulations. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members, on, on the desk, you'll find a little gift bag uh, there that I Inside the gift bag, you will find this. It is uh, an ornament uh, this time of year. It is a Mark V, it's modeled after a Mark V die break. It was used here at the city of Charleston Springs in uh, the 1940s and 50s. Uh, actually, many of you met Artemis Agudis, who, who runs the store uh, right here on the Sponge Shop, who actually sells it. It's modeled after the suit that her grandfather wore during that period of time. And during that period, uh, Charleston Springs played a, uh, a role in the war effort. Uh, the sponges were used as insulation. Uh, inside the airplane with a natural flame retardant. And to this very day, uh, Mayor uh, Charles Springs is very proud of the, uh, of the effort that they played uh, to defend this country in World War II. Wanted to pass this on on behalf of myself, my family, uh, the mayor, and the people of Carpen. Thanks for being here today. Merry Christmas and happy Christmas. Thank you, Representative Sproul. Um, we have our next delegation meeting is on January the 31st at the Marble Library. Uh, anyone who didn't make it on the list today is encouraged to 